we have Miss Ariane Lemire. Ariane is an immigrant who started with very little. She founded, uh, she's the founder of Wealth Gym and with her husband, Chris, now owns over 1,400 rental units. So Ariane, we are super excited to have you join us here today. The floor is yours. Go ahead and take it away. Awesome. Thank you, Haley. And thank you, Chris and Jamie, for putting this all together. I am super excited to be um, with all of you guys. Um, so today I wanted to talk about something that's I'm super passionate about it. it's near and dear to my heart and it's mastering your finances for true time and financial freedom. So a little bit about me uh, and my husband, Chris. So we started investing in real estate really in 2016. Um, and for two years before that, we were just kind of figuring out like what we were going to do with our lives and our finances and all that kind of stuff. Um, so here's like a quick timeline of uh, our, our story started flipping houses in 2016, actually became an agent in 2015. So a year before that, um, fast forward to today, um, we're so blessed that we have uh, actual time freedom. We can spend three months overseas. Well, not right now, <laughs> but last year we were able to. So right now it's just domestic travel, but we were able to spend three months traveling. We have 51 rentals just here in our backyard. We're partners in... Um, over 1,200 multifamily rentals. I think that's 1,400 here. We're closing on um, a couple hundred more soon. And then we, we also have a flipping and wholesaling business as well. And our passion right now really is teaching other people how to build their time and financial freedom through business and rentals and mastering their finances. So... Have any of you experienced these related to money? Fear, anxiety, stress, sleepless nights, and arguments with your wife, husband, or loved ones. I know I did. And the great thing is you're not alone, right? 70% of Americans and probably the whole world feel stressed about money each month. And there's even people who have a lot of money who have gone bankrupt. And you know some of these people. So the conclusion is a lot of people have problems with money, right? It's not just you. So if, if you're ever stressed about it, don't feel like it's just you. And we also know that more money isn't the answer. So what is the answer? Well, we found um, the answer a few years ago, right? So like our initial why in starting real estate and really making going on a journey to financial freedom is... So we currently live in Florida and my family lives in New Zealand. So we wanted to just be able to travel and see them. And when we had kids, we wanted them to know both sides of their family. So we felt trapped in the beginning because we couldn't. Like we had day jobs or didn't have the money to spend thousands and thousands of dollars going overseas. And, you know, like for the longest time, I kept telling myself that, that was the real reason we didn't have the money but now looking back to where we were five years ago really the money was there i just didn't manage my money in a way that prepared us for a crisis or having to spend um, money to go overseas over a period of time and so that's what i wanted to share with you guys today what we actually learned to manage our finances to have true time and financial freedom and here's a quote I love, manage your money or your, man or your money will manage you, right? The great thing is there is a better way just ahead. So we talked earlier about like why we have those negative emotions, right? Like, so we have all the stress, all the fear, but what actually causes those? It's usually thoughts like these. I'm not sure what my money's doing. I don't know whether I'll have enough money for something. Or I'm afraid to make a change or invest because it's working right now, but I'm not sure what's going to happen in the future. So how do we fix that? Well, first, we create a system to always see what our money's doing so we have clarity. Then we also want a system to show us where the money is coming from. And then we also want a system that will give us the confidence and safety to know that if we invest or make a change, we, we have something to fall back on. So this is what we're going to talk about today. We're going to get clarity to know exactly what our money's doing. And that involves a money plan and a cash flow projection. So we not only know what we have right now, but we know what's going to happen in the next three, six months, 12 months. Two, we're going to 
learn how to have a safety net and adequate cash reserves. And then three, how do we actually make money work for us versus working for money? And we do that by investing in cash flow, right? And so this presentation will have a lot of numbers, right? Because we're talking about like money and systems, but I just want to make sure that you guys, um, if you ever feel overwhelmed, just understand we're trying to get the big picture right now. So don't focus too much on like the numbers or like whatever spreadsheet there is. I'm going to send you, I'm going to give you a link at the end to get a copy of all of the spreadsheets and stuff I use. Um, but just focus on like getting like the gist of it, getting the big picture. Okay. So first of all, we need to get clarity on what we're actually trying to accomplish. Um, you know, I think a lot of times we start on a path and we never take the time to figure out what we actually want or what our family actually wants. I know I've done this over the years. Like I saw someone else and they were doing this and that. And I was like, that's what I want to do. Right. But after I went down that path and that went down to get that goal, I actually realized that I kind of just copied someone else's goal. I never took the time to actually figure out what I want to do in, with my life and my money and my time and financial freedom. So take some time to figure out what you actually want. Like maybe that looks like, hey, I just want to have this much passive income and raise my kids and homeschool them, right? Some people might want to do that. Or some people might say, look, I want this much passive income so that I can start another business, right? I'm super passionate about this online review business, like Justin um, was talking about earlier. So whatever it is, just make sure it's your goal, not someone, someone else's that you copy. And with the money plan, we need a clear picture of what we make and spend, and we're going to fund our runway. Um, that's usually more in line with business, right? If we're starting a business, if you're a new agent or you're maybe starting an agent team or you're starting to flip houses, you want some funds to keep as your runway so you can start that business without worrying about how you're going to pay the bills. All right. So here's a sample money plan. Some people call this a budget, right? Um, but it's really just what you're making each and every month, what your passive income is, how much you're spending each month and what that looks like over the year. And again, like I can get, get you a copy of this particular sheet, but the gist mainly is you just want to know what your money's doing and how long you could potentially go without income so that you can focus on what you really want to do, whether it's start a business or um, spend time with your family. Now, as far as your business plan goes, we have a house flipping business. So that's the sample we're going to use, right? So you want to figure out what profit you want to make, which usually comes from what your average deal size is. What do you make per deal? And then how many deals are you going to need to get to that gross profit goal per year? Then you also know need to know what resources it takes to get there, right? So you... You know what profit you need, but you need to figure out how much you're going to need to pay your people to get there, the like team members you hire, and then the systems you need to use. So you might need a CRM or you might need um, a review service. So whatever those costs are, you need to take those into account. And then you allocate the resources accordingly. So for example, here's a plan to flip 12 houses a year, right? We're going to flip 12 houses a year, we average 35K a deal. So this year we should make 400K if we hit that goal. Next, we're gonna figure out how much we're gonna allocate to each particular thing. So we want to make a profit, right? So 25% of that can go towards profit, some towards taxes, to growth, giving, and operations. And operations is what your expenses actually are. Um, and then this is a sample operations budget, right? So you have your people costs and your systems costs. And again, like, don't worry too much about the numbers. The goal is just whatever business you're going to start, you're going to have some budget, right? So figure out whatever it's going to look like for that business you have. And from that, this is that at the bottom, we have this runway fund. So if this is a new venture, if you want, if you're an agent and you're like, hey, I'm going to start flipping houses, then you want to fund those operations costs for at least the first six months. 
And what that does is it, it allows you to learn the business, right? Like learn how to flip houses, learn how to manage those team members, learn how to get the best deals out there instead of spending your time and energy and stress worrying about, oh, how am I going to make payroll next week, right? Because the deal didn't close on time. Um, some other tips if you are going to start a flipping business is you want to have that runway, which is your operating expense budget, right? So you want to put money in there to fund your business. But when we're flipping houses, typically we also buy inventory, which is the house plus um, the renovation costs and all the other costs. So there's the purchase price of the house, the renovations, the money cost. If you're borrowing hard money or private money, you have to pay them interest. And then you also have all the other uh, other holding costs, which are um, taxes, insurance, utilities, all that kind of stuff. And one of the things we um, ran into in the beginning is we would just fund the purchase price and renovations. And then we would scramble each and every month trying to find the money costs and the holding costs because we didn't account for all that, right? So now, before we buy a renovation property, we actually fund the whole amount, right? So we're not scrambling in that three or six months that we're doing the project to find the extra, a, a lot of times, like thousands and thousands of, thousands of dollars per month to fund the money costs and holding costs. So, and this is really saying that you want to separate those operating accounts, right? The operating expense for the actual business and then the money for the actual projects because otherwise you end up robbing Peter to pay Paul. You rob your business operating account to pay for the money and holding costs in the project cost bank account. So if you have them in separate bank accounts, it helps you keep track of those better. So discipline yourself not to rob Peter to pay Paul. Um, there's different ways to fund a business. You can fully fund it from day one from your own cash, or you can bootstrap and reinvest, right? So maybe in the beginning, if you don't have all the money you need for the expenses for a $400,000 flipping business or a $400,000 agent business, then start with a lower goal. Maybe you start with a $200,000 business. And then as you get profits from that, reinvest it into the business. Um, the problem is that most of us get stuck in number two, but we never pay ourselves back, right? So we just keep bootstrapping and bootstrapping, but you never actually take the time to run a profitable business where you're taking profit out of business, right? At some point that has to happen because otherwise you just are in this hamster wheel that you created. And just a reminder, it doesn't have to be your money. You can raise private money or hard money for the project costs. Um, and you can take, uh, sometimes you can get some lines of credit for that. All right. So the other major thing you want to have when running a business is a cash flow projection, right? So you want to figure out when the money's coming in and when the money's going out. So you're not too stressed about like how you're gonna make all those payments. So for flips, we need the projected closing date and projected profit. Um, and I'm gonna go through these reports here. So for example, when we're flipping houses, we want to have a report that says, that is called the deal profit projections, right? Like basically you input all your numbers in here, you figure out when you're going to sell the property, it calculates how much profit that's going to be. And that helps you project when you're actually realizing those profits. And again, I'll give you a link to these so you don't have to like worry about the columns and stuff. Just get the gist of it, right? Like the whole point of this is so we're not sitting here and we're thinking, oh, when am I actually going to make my money, right? Like you can actually see where it's going to head. The other part is your budget, which we already covered earlier. And then we have another report that combines both of those, which is our cash flow projections. This gives us when we're going to make the money, right, based on our other report earlier. And it shows us when we're going to spend the money. So if you look here on the right, you can see that it shows us that we're, we funded our runway with 80K. That's where we started, right? 
and then we're spending the money and then we catch back up as we make our profit. So that's the main thing you just want. You just want something to show you um, what's actually happening so that you can make decisions based on that. So for example, this particular example, they started running out of money, right? Why did that happen? It's because they stopped buying deals. They stopped buying and selling deals. And so you can make that decision earlier, right? Like maybe in June, they make the decision that, hey, we need to buy like two deals a month because otherwise we're going to run out of money. It just helps you make those decisions. The great thing is if you don't like how things are, you can change it. You are not a tree. I like that quote by Jim Rohn. All right. So what if the projections don't pan out? And what if the deals don't close on time? Or what if there's a personal emergency? Those have happened to us many times before. This is why we need a safety net and cash reserves. So what are people who have mastered their money doing, right? They have a safety net and they have cash reserves, especially more during times like this. You know, we're still in kind of uncertain times with um, the illness going around, right? And it's an investment in your peace of mind. Um, in the beginning, I didn't really like having a safety net. I, I wanted to like invest it all the time. But at some point in the business, there was a time where we had like a cash crunch and you know, like that safety net actually saved us because otherwise we would have had to borrow like a lot more money at a lot higher interest rate. And it was just so stressful that I know it doesn't sound very sexy to have six months or more of your expenses in a liquid account you can access, right? Usually that's a bank account or maybe life insurance or a line of credit. But that investment in your peace of mind is so, so, so important. So you don't make decisions out of fear and decisions out of, oh, like, I'm scared that I'm going to lose everything because I don't have the money to, like, pay this mortgage or pay this loan. So how do you calculate your safety net? You're going to take your needs expenses, and this applies to personal or business. Like, what are the mission-critical expenses you have that you need to pay? And you get that number. Maybe, maybe that number is $10,000, right? Then you multiply that by six months. This gives you a six month safety net that if for some reason um, things don't go according to plan, you sell properties late or you have to take a break for a family emergency, then you have six months of a breathing room to delegate something, hire something out or for you to just take a break and go back and figure it out. Right. You don't feel like you're going to lose your business tomorrow. Then you also need to figure out your personal safety net number. This applies to your finances too. Like if the business isn't working well, or maybe you're not getting clients right now, then you don't want your family to stress out about how you're going to make the next mortgage payment or car payment. So make sure you have that personal and business safety net, business safety net number, and also actually keep it, keep your personal and business safety net in a, in, in an account or a line of credit account where you can draw on it if you need it. And third is my favorite point. Make money work for you. If you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. Said by Warren Buffett. So you want to create passive income that first exceeds your needs and then your wants. And then that's really where true time and financial freedom comes from, right? Like you don't have to work, you choose to work. And after your passive income exceeds your needs and wants, it almost becomes impossible to deplete your safety net ever again. And it almost becomes impossible to not be financially free, not have the time and financial freedom to do what you want, when you want, with whoever you want. So here are some examples of passive income that take the least amount of time to maintain. So all of you guys know about the EXP rev share. It's pretty cool. Um, there's a lot of people who have a lot of passive income from that. We also you also have investments in large deals as limited partners. Um, so I guess to backtrack like this passive income is like the least amount of time, right? So for example, there are some passive income streams that are 
less passive, right? Because you actually need to still do things to keep them going. Um, but these ones, typically you set it up and then that passive income comes in regularly, right? So with like one of my, my favorite ways to invest is investing in large deals as a limited partner. Um, we invest a lot of money in multifamily deals. Um, there's also people who invest in self-storage deals, mobile home parks, etc. Then you can also do private lending. I'm sure um, some of you are familiar with this, right? Like if you know another investor who maybe has an active business, maybe they're a flipper and they're always looking for private lenders to fund their flips, then that's an easy way for you to have true passive income, right? Like the, really the only work you do is you talk to that other business owner, you negotiate a rate, and then you collect your check. So here's a sample multifamily investment we closed on this last month. Um, it's 267 units in Fort Smith. So bought it for 32K a unit. Um, then we were putting in another 5,600 a unit. And here are the sample returns on 100K investment. So we invested our money into the deal and the cash on cash returns are an app, the projected cash on cash returns are 12%, right? Year one is about 8.8% and it goes up from there. And as far as being passive investors in this deal, all we have to do is wire the money. We read the quarterly reports from the management team and the asset managers, and then we collect our returns. So it's pretty passive for us. And those are the kind of investments I like doing now, like in the beginning, in the beginning of our journey, when we didn't have funds to invest, we put in a lot of time and sweat equity into investments. But now that we do have more money and we want to enjoy our time and financial freedom, right? We want to travel more. We want to spend more time with family and friends. Then we're choosing to maybe make a little bit less return, but we can partner with someone and they are using their time. We're not using our time. So in Wealth Gym, I talked about it earlier, it's where we teach others about financial freedom. We have five different stages. So stage one is destroying high interest debt. Stage two is building your safety net. Stage three is level one financial freedom. This is what I call living in peace. This is where your passive income pays for all of your needs, right? So it doesn't pay for like all the fancy stuff you want, but it pays for your needs, your, your housing, your food, your transportation, things like that. Level... Stage four is level two financial freedom, living in comfort. And this is where your passive income pays for your needs and your wants. So if you like eating out, however much often, your passive income pays for all that. So you don't even have to worry about um, where that money's coming from because you already have passive income that pays for all of it. And then stage five, level three, is where we all want to be, right? You have a little koala on um, some beach somewhere and they're just collecting more and more passive income. We call this living in abundance, where your passive income pays for your needs, your wants, and so much more that you can't even spend it if you tried. So that is the goal, to be that level three living in abundance koala. Um, now we're running a little bit out of time, so I can, I'll kind of breeze through this. This is just how you calculate um, your passive income number, right? So you're your freedom fund is how much money you need to invest to have financial and time freedom. So the way you figure out how much you need is by getting your yearly passive income goal and divide that by your rate of return. So let's assume you can make 10% average return on your money. And your monthly needs are $5,000 a month, which is $60,000 a year. So you divide that $60,000, what you need to make each year in passive income, by 10% and that equals 600K. Meaning if you can invest 600K in investments that can give you a 10% return, you can be financially free in level one, living in peace where your passive income pays for your all of your needs. And like I think that should be everybody's initial goal because once you get to that point, you can do a lot more with your life like even just even if you don't want to not work you can still focus on the work that you actually are passionate about and usually that's where you make the most money anyway when you work on something that feels like it's not work like you enjoy it you're passionate about it you just want to help more people and you don't really care about how much you make that's usually where you make the most amount of money 
Um, now here's level two, financial freedom, living in comfort. It's when your financial freedom fund, um, where your passive income pays for your needs and wants. So in this example, this person's number is $10,000 a month or 120K a year. So we're gonna divide 120K divided by 10 and we need 1.2 million invested at 10% to make 120K a year in passive income. And the great thing about it is, is like that's forever, right? Like I know 1.2 million sounds like a lot, um, but if you can hit that in the next two, three, five years, maybe you're there now. Like you seriously don't have to work anymore. Um, and you can focus on passion projects, biz passion businesses that you actually want to start. So tying this all together, get clarity, know exactly what your money's doing. Like that's actually the hardest part. If you think about um, like uh, your health journey, right? Like if you ever tried to lose weight or tried to um, build muscle, usually the first thing you have to do is just look in the mirror, weigh yourself and measure yourself. We're just so uncomfortable, right? But that's the beginning of how you actually get there. What gets measured gets managed and improves. So if you can get clarity on your finances, and again, I'll give you like a link to all those calculators and spreadsheets and stuff, you can use that to actually start making progress towards your goals. Then we need the safety net and cash reserve. This is an investment in our peace of mind. And then you want to make money work for you versus working for money and invest for cash flow. And I just want to leave you guys with this. So, you know, just five, six years ago, um, I didn't know that what, you know, if you told me like I would have 1400 units right now and financial freedom and all that, like I would not have believed you at all. It'd be like, yeah, right. Like that's going to happen in 20 years, not five, but it did. Right. And it started from getting clear in where we're, we were at and making small steps each and every day to get more passive income. And now we're here just five short, short years later. So if we can do it, you can too. So here's where you can get a copy of the slides and all of those sheets. Download them at wealthgym.com forward slash invested agents. And I would love to connect with you guys. I have a YouTube channel. I share a lot of videos about financial freedom and real estate investing. So youtube.com forward slash ask Ariane. And then here's my email, ari at wealthgym.com. So Thank you guys Thanks so Great. much, Ari. That that was that was amazing, and that's especially if you're getting into. I mean, really for anyone, anyone, but especially is getting into flipping that cash flow management. Uh, something that you know, I always thought I was good at cash flow management, just because I just always made more than I spent, and then you start spending all this money on all these projects, and I realize like, holy cow, like there's got to be a better way to do this. Um, so everything you taught, wish I knew like. 10 years ago, um, but it's so powerful. It's not too late. Um, anyone can can get better at managing their finances. Um, like even if you're for Warren Buffett, like um, you can still do better and grow better. Therefore, you can become a better investor and grow more. So um, I know you mentioned your website, also your Instagram handle, the Ariane Lemire. You got it right there. <clears throat> Um, and I don't, um, I don't know if you're going to be hanging around in the chat afterwards. Um, you can drop, um, drop your comments. There were, um, I'm not sure if I saw any questions, but I, I saw a lot of praise. Everyone was saying, thank you. Just amazing info. A couple folks, uh, looking forward to the spreadsheet. Um, thanks. Th thanks again, Arian. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me, Chris and Jamie, and I will hang around here and talk to you guys some more. All right. Take care.